All right, bro. Uh -huh. Following your lead here. In this, my Zen garden. This is your Zen garden. <laughs> okay. I'm in jeans. Yeah, not that, not very. Uh, is that normal? No, but it doesn't okay, matter. Okay, perfect. For meditating, it doesn't matter. So do, I, can... do I keep my shoes on? You know, sometimes I take them off. Okay. You can keep them since we're outside. You okay, can keep great. Them on. Right, I'll keep... I mean, usually I'm barefoot when I do all this stuff, but got it. Yeah. I've been interviewing celebrities for 20 years, and honestly, the whole stiff interview thing is not really my style. So I wanted to talk to PGA Tour players to make them feel comfortable. Slate it. Slate it, baby. 2023 was a year for Wyndham Clark. His first PGA Tour win, followed by his first major, put his name in the conversation. But this dude has been through a lot, from dealing with the grief of losing his mother in college to almost quitting the game altogether. We thought it was only fitting to come to the Savannah Wellness Resort and Spa outside of his home here in Scottsdale, Arizona, to talk about how he overcame some of his toughest mental challenges. I must say, I think I probably spent four to five months trying to get you on this show, and I got Oprah before you because life must be super wild. <laughs> what is life like for Wyndham Clark? It's been pretty hectic. I mean, between you know gaining a bunch of new sponsorships, representing those brands, and then obviously having friends like yourself, other buddies of mine that have podcasts or whatever going on their show, and then, you know, little newspapers and Colorado magazines and to talk to the hometown boy yeah so you do all that th all that stuff and then you're like oh my gosh I just spent two full days of just pure media and then you go okay well now I actually want to spend time with my girlfriend or my buddies and um and then obviously practice and so then that one week that I have off ends up being two three days of doing a bunch of sponsor stuff and media and then the other days of trying to be a normal person and then also get ready for the next event. So it's it's been pretty pretty nuts. Do you feel comfortable in the spotlight? Yeah, I, I, I enjoy... It, I think it comes naturally, I think, because I've um, seen other friends and peers of mine have success and be in the spotlight. And so I was able to see good models of what it's like and how it works. And so I felt like as I've gotten into the spotlight, I almost just felt comfortable doing it. Yeah, I, I pick up that you handle it with grace and ease, which is a very refreshing feeling because we, of course, can see it go both ways. You've overcome so much mentally, and I admire that greatly, and I feel like that can help so many people. You've been really outspoken about that, and I know that meditation has been one of those things that has gotten you there. It's kind of really changed my life. I probably pretty consistent almost every day. Mm -hmm. Definitely during tournament weeks, it's every day. And then the fun thing is I do guided meditation, so someone's kind of walking me through it. But as I've gotten better at meditation, I've started to do, like, do it myself. When you sit there for 10 minutes on your own in dead silence, it's really hard to control your thoughts and you have to bring yourself back to your breath, back to like the present. And so, it's, yeah, it's been really good. That's my biggest struggle because I'll start grounding. I'll do like a cold plunge. I'll ground in the grass or yeah. something like that. And I'll have a good couple minutes. And then I start thinking about the day. And I have no idea what happens, but I'm already, I'm like having a conversation with someone in my head from three weeks ago. How do you stay so focused when you're in the middle of it? Because well, that's what I suck at. That happens. Like, even if you do it a lot and you get really good at it, it's very hard unless you're like, you know, some yogi that's incredible at it or some monk to where you can just be you know 10 20 30 minutes without any interruptions but for me if i did a 10 minute meditation i bet you 30 times in that meditation you veer off it's mm -hmm. just as you get better the time you veer off becomes less because then you are conscious to okay bring myself back and then the time that you're really in the present starts to get longer mm -hmm. so what's great is when you come out of it is how how good you feel is there anything you take from these moments that you can do, you know, right before teeing off? Well, I do it every morning before I tee off, and I start, you know, start the day off that way. But we'll do a little here. Is that cool? Yeah, let's do okay. it. Okay, I don't yeah, want to get you out of your routine. Oh, no, this is, honestly, <laughs> I, you always need it. So I typically lay down. Okay. Uh, and I like, you know, cross feet, put your hands wherever you want. And the way you start is typically with big breaths. Okay. So if you take, and it's usually belly breaths. 
So you do a four second inhale. Okay. Then you would typically hold for four seconds. And then release for seven and it's through the mouth and it's long and get to where everything comes out and then you do it all again. So here, I'll get with you and do it. Yeah, let's do it. I love it. Is this more spiritual or mental or both? Well, the breath is uh, huge in getting you present. Think of a place or a person or a time that you were so happy. And so like for me, a lot of times it goes back to like a river. I love to fly fish. Yeah. So I go to a certain river in Colorado where I fish and I just imagine myself in that moment and I hear the water. Then you hear the noise of your fly going back and forth and you look at the beauty. As much detail gets you as present in that moment as possible. I'm there, man. Yeah, so you do all that, and then as your mind drifts off, you always come back to the breath, which yeah. then gets you present. If I'm about to play golf, I'll visualize great putts, I'll visualize times I've had success, I'll visualize me smiling on the golf course, joy and happiness. And then as you get away from that, you bring yourself back to the breath, and then back to where you're trying to meditate on. Do you have a goal for where you want to be mentally at the end of the year? Yeah, that's actually where all my goals are, is mental stuff. I just want to get more consistent in everything. So I want my lows to be not as low, and I want my highs to, uh, not to get too high and to kind of always be very level and consistent. And so mentally, I want to try to always be reading a book. That's one of my goals. I want to meditate six of the seven days. I want to be able to increase how long I can meditate and how long I can focus. Two guys I really idolize in the mental game that I love is Steph Curry and Roger Federer. Mm -hmm. To me, both of them have stuff that I feel like I struggle with. So Steph is super calm and joyful when he plays and loose, you know? Yeah. He just seems like he's always having fun. And then Roger, in any moment, good or bad, is just literally so even keel and so I look at those guys and how they handle themselves mentally, and I go, okay, that's kind of where I want to be. Do they know that? Have you talked to them? I actually have had contact with both of them. I have not told that to them. I feel like they would love hearing that. Yeah, well, maybe maybe one of these days I'll, I'll tell them. Feds struggled with similar things that I did, which is anger and frustration and showing it outwards in front of people. And now he's just this, like, graceful human on the tennis court and I'd love to get like that on the golf course so I'd love to ask him questions and figure it out I wish I could do every interview like this this is the <laughs> most relaxing what, are you a guru yet because dude I am like I'm in Colorado fly fishing with you I mean when you close your eyes and visualize it's amazing how powerful the mind is how annoying is it when a guy's asking you questions during a meditation <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't get to meditate. <laughs> you're the one that gets to meditate. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. I appreciate yeah, you're it. You're welcome. That was nice. Yeah. Should we grab our uh, mats yeah. and keep going? Yep, of course. Yeah. We just saw a bobcat. I mean, this is like a safari. <laughs> we're at the Arizona Zoo. Okay, but it's yeah. my backyard. I wasn't sure <laughs> where we were at anymore. This is fire. Arizona has some wild creatures. It's pretty nuts, actually. I'm learning that. Um, let's chat a, a bit about the game that you're really good at. How many times a day do you think about the U.S. Open right now? Like the one coming up? Yes. I've probably thought about it a couple times. I would say I think about golf every 10 minutes. I probably think about my swing. I think about what I need to do. Even when I'm taking weeks off, I have to try to shut it off. Like, I'm always thinking about how to get better. Now... In that, sometimes I'll then find myself thinking about upcoming tournament, yeah. U.S. Open. But yeah, I mean, I more think about my game in itself than maybe one specific tournament. And now that you've had some time to process the first two majors of this year, obviously didn't go the way you wanted, <clears throat> what's your takeaway? Well, it's kind of just a perfect storm of game wasn't in a great spot. If anything, I've just thought of it as, you know what, this is a, a little... You know, blip in the in the road, but yeah. I feel like I'll be better and stronger for it coming out. How'd you talk to yourself after 
those miscuts? Well, I was hard on myself. I didn't say good things to myself. And then, then all the training kick, kicked back in and said, you know what, all right, it's one tournament, whatever. There's, there's a Masters next year. You kind of get back to reality and go, okay, you know what, I've done great and we're having a good year and we can continue to have a good year if we don't let this affect us. I can't help but think about this renewed mental strength that has gotten a lot of attention through Wyndham Clark. What was the biggest shift after Full Swing came out for you? I haven't watched it, so I still you haven't. haven't. No, I still haven't watched it. On purpose? Yeah. Watching yourself on TV, I feel like is kind of weird. Like even something like this, I, I probably won't watch it. Appreciate um, the support. Yeah, well, it has nothing to do with it. I'll have uh, my agent and my yeah. family watch it, and they'll be like, oh, it was awesome, and it turned out great. If it's golf, like, I'll watch some golf stuff to see how I handle myself on the course, um, you know, see my routine, did I get fast. Like, I'll watch it in that sense. I yeah, critique yeah. stuff. But this stuff, is, this isn't my necessarily my job. So a lot of people would stop me and say, I loved your episode. It was amazing that you opened up. When did we actually really do our last serious talk? I feel like we haven't talked about life stuff in a long time, actually. Yeah, we've we talked haven't. a lot of golf. It seems like when I'm mentally not as strong, the putts don't fall. That's kind of a weird correlation. Well, we've totally learned that. If you keep working on the mental goals, there's nothing stopping you. So it's okay to go there, but when your mind goes a little bit to worry or concern, just circle right back that good things are happening. It was a phenomenal episode. I got a chance to spend time with Julie, your sports therapist. Oh, cool. What an incredible woman she is. She's got this special way of bringing emotion and all these things that you kind of hold up inside of you out. But you were probably like a lot of us, were you hesitant? What was your experience like working with her and how has that changed you? Well, initially I was against it, only in the sense that I've done a lot of it prior. Didn't work? Uh, and I felt like it didn't work. Yeah. I wasn't doing any personal growth, so I think that was part of it. And then I also think I, I always had men that were either sports psychologists or therapists. Nothing wrong with it. But I think for me, in my life, you know, the fact that I lost my mom and didn't really have that motherly figure in the last 11, 12 years of my life, I think having Julie being a woman, it's like I had the woman's intuition and the gentleness that she has. I just felt so much comfort that I felt like I could open up to her. A lot of her initial stuff for me was therapy. She's like, I think there's a lot of stuff we need to deal with, the passing of your mom, your relationship with your dad, any other current relationships, where your anger is coming from. And so she goes, give me six months all in. That sounds like a long time. Yeah, but she, <laughs> yeah. But she goes, give me six months all in, doing everything I tell you. And after six months, if you don't see any improvement and don't like it, then we'll go our separate ways and we'll be done. And right at that about six month mark was when I won the US Open. And so, which is pretty cool because- Can't get rid of her yeah, now. Yeah, can't get rid of her now. So it's honestly amazing how much better I am in so many areas. And even if the score doesn't always, you know, equate to how I feel mentally, right. I just know I can handle it so much better and I feel like it's helped me handle even some of the success I've had too. I would love to go back a little bit if you're cool with that. Yeah. 13 years old. You're out there playing with your dad and you get upset and he decides he's going to take your golf clubs away. I'm, I'm trying to get into the genesis of where you would become so competitive and then frustrated. Uh, well, that would have been one of many times that that happened. That's um, just a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, that was just <laughs> the one week. Uh, you know, it's funny if anyone, you know, any of my friends would be watching this from when I was younger they could tell you all the stories. I mean, on the basketball court, I got in many fights. I was technicals, kicked out of games, just because I would lose my temper and then it would cause fights or push kids. In golf, bad stuff would happen. I'd throw balls, I'd throw clubs, and then I would just have, you know, a terrible attitude. And my dad played sports and obviously didn't tolerate that. In college, is it true you were playing in a tournament and then you got so upset you just left and went on a drive? Yeah, it was, uh, it was qualifying. qualifying. Uh, it was the 15th hole at Stillwater Country Club. I was at Oklahoma State, and I hit a shot in the trees, missed the green, so it wasn't even that bad of a shot. I turn around and just break my club over the tree, 
So you graduated to breaking clubs. Bra graduated yeah. breaking clubs. I didn't break many. But in college and junior golf, I knew how sacred my club was. Expensive. <laughs> um, but so I broke the club, and then I knew I was like, oh no, I screwed up, and I was so mad that I kind of had this almost manic moment where I just was like, I'm done with this. And it was right after my mom had passed, and it was that fall, and and so I I just walked off and just got in the car and just started driving very fast, and I ended up in a river in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma, probably an hour away from Stillwater. And that's when I finally stopped and you know, I was there for a couple hours and yeah. So then it obviously led to me being pulled into the coach's office and talking about things. But yeah, that was definitely one of the lower points in college. What would you do if you quit golf altogether? Did you have an idea of what you wanted to do oh, for the rest I mean, of your life? I thought about it a lot. I think that was one of the things that, one of the reasons why I didn't quit because every time I thought about what would I do, it would always come back to I've always wanted to play golf. But there's also times when I go, golf's the one thing that I get so angry about. And all the anger, all the grief, all the anything in my life came out when I played in golf. And I said, I'd rather not ever have that come out and do something totally different. Clearly that wouldn't have been fixing the problem. But I honestly, in those moments, I, I might just be a fly guide on the river just fishing year-round and I'd go from summer in Colorado to summer somewhere in Argentina or Belize and I would just be a fly guide and my mind would go down that route and just say all right well I'm just gonna do something I enjoy and who cares about winning tournaments and the fame and all that stuff I've come a long ways that's for sure when I met you for the first time we're in Idaho you're playing golf with Mark Wahlberg I was just a guy driving by you were so kind it was like three or four minutes but I just thought to myself, he just won the U.S. Open. He's in Idaho. He's golfing with Mark Wahlberg. It just seemed like a whirlwind. D do those days ever get normal when you're just out there with your, your buddy and your boss at Municipal? Yeah. Well, that was really fun because it was one of the first times I got to really hang with Mark. And so it was really fun, you know, being a partner with Mark in Municipal and, you know, him kind of really trusting in um, Harry, who runs the company, and trusting Harry and then... Um, realizing their vision and saying, you know what, we're going to take a chance on this Wyndham, who's 130th in the world, but up-and-coming player, has a lot of upside, and and that was two years ago. And then fast forward, now we're top five player in the world. And, and so it was, it was pretty amazing. So I'm really thankful for, for Mark doing that. And, and now they're really wanting me to help build the golf line, which is really cool. So, you know, we're working on coming out with an amazing golf apparel line and you know he's got the whole gym fitness and the athleisure stuff and they're kind of leaning into me on the golf stuff which is really neat you know not many people get to do that and it's it's kind of fun growing a brand it's really opened the floodgates in terms of business for you i know that you've got other brands not just municipal um a little birdie told me that you brought me a gift it was like yeah the sweetest thing ever yeah so <laughs> i'm actually wearing them right now okay. it's um so this is cool it's a scottsdale based company nice it's uh wmp so i partnered with them to make golf specific kind of trendy cool glasses and so we Love got that. you a pair so this cool, is bro. you know green inspired with golf and and here they named them the Wyndham. It's the Fairway Collection. Bro, you've got your own glasses. Named yeah, after you. I know I got my own glasses. That's so insane. It's pretty sick. It's pretty sick. So, Still humbling, right? Yeah, it is. It is. So, wanted to give you some. I think they're pretty. Uh, How we feel about it? Pretty them. good. Yeah, it looks. All I right. think you look good. Hey, what's, you look up? Good. what's up? What's up, everybody? Yeah, I, uh, let's keep walking. I love this. <laughs> Early on in your pro career, you described it as almost like a black cloud was over you because you weren't winning. Can you take me back there a little bit and describe the frustration you were going through? So as I came out of college um, and was a pro, I thought I was going to just right away have success. And I didn't. It would just eat at me more and more and more. And so as I finally broke through last year, just even the first win, it was like this huge weight was just lifted off my shoulders. Victory for Wyndham Clark as he wins the Wells Fargo Championship. I felt like, okay, now I can really go and enjoy and play golf because that was my biggest hurdle, to be honest. When did you start being nicer to yourself? It started right as I worked with Julie. That's one of our biggest things we first worked with was self-talk and replacing negative thoughts and negative self-talk with positive ones. And I know it in the moment, maybe it doesn't fully help you, 
But as you start training your brain, you fast forward, you know, months, weeks later, and you find yourself, you have the negative thought, and right away you go, nah, that's not right. And then you're instantly out of that negative and you're right back in the positive. Would love to know a little more uh, about your golf game and we can walk over there, but okay. this is just uh, one more question. What are the perks of dating a cheerleader? <laughs> well, I, I don't know if this is a perk, but I've danced more in my life than ever. <laughs> she's che cheerleader, but she's a really good dancer. She's right over there, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I know, yeah. So Her she... face is... <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we we take dance lessons, so we you ballroom, do. ballroom, yeah. ballroom dance lessons. Yeah, stop it! How yeah. is that going? Well, I have to be honest. We were doing it pretty, like religiously, once twice a week. We haven't done it in a while. We've traveled a lot, but um, we ran into our dance instructor actually out, and she's like, "When are you coming back she in?" She pissed at you because you're yeah, winning golf she, tournaments yeah, and she, not dancing. I know. But that we do, we dance a lot. I love it. Yeah. All right, let's go on a walk. <laughs> oh, good. I feel like I've heard so many incredible stories about mom, whether it's been a podcast or an interview you've done, and I'd love to ask you a few more questions about yeah. her. She got you really into the game of golf. I know she would leave notes on your golf bag. What do the notes say, and do you still have those well, notes? you know, when you're little, that's kind of embarrassing because, yeah, you know, kids probably make fun of you, right? Yeah, and then now, you know, I fast forward, and I would look, give anything to just have a note from my mom. Mm. Um, but what, it was always some positive note. So my mom was um, very successful in her business as a national sales director for Mary Kay. And so she led thousands of women, and um, she was actually one of the best at what she did. And she took that in a lot into parenting, and she was so positive and so motivational. And so she would leave, like, a positive little note, and then it would always say, love you, Mommy, and she would, like, kiss it with her lips. Wow. And now I'd find it in my lunch pail. I'd find it in my golf bag. But sometimes that's embarrassing when you pull out your lunch at school in fifth grade, and it says, love you, Mommy, and sure. you're like, oh, gosh, you don't hide that. But she was, I mean, it was amazing how great she was. So she, there's so many great stories I could tell you on. On her. You really felt her presence last year at the U.S. Open in L.A. Why was that? So my mom, coming out of college, went to uh, L.A. to try to make it as someone in film or actress or sports anchor. And in that time, she met my dad. They got married. They lived there for three years. And I would hear tons of people saying, oh, when done this and that. And, and, and I'd always hear the one person that had something to do with my mom. So they'd say, hey, Wyndham, come over here, come over here. And I'd be like, normally wouldn't do that, but I would go over there and they're like, hey, I knew your mom. I'd be like, oh, that's cool. And then they'd show me pictures of them knowing my mom back in her 20s and 30s when she was living in LA. Wow. And so I was like, wow, that's pretty neat. Well, that happened almost every single day. And people would just show me photos or saying they knew my mom and how much she meant to them and how amazing she was. And then obviously then I go and have it's one of the best weeks of my life. And so it was just kind of this really cool feeling and moment that I was like, I really felt so much of my mom's presence that week that was really cool. She always told you to play big. Probably had a different meaning back then. Now when you think about that phrase and that saying, what does that look like in your life? That's definitely transitioned a little bit, but the, the craziest thing is my mom told it to me when she was, I mean, really on her deathbed. She said, she goes, you're going to be one of the best players in the world and you're going to do amazing things in golf. And I just know it. She goes, but what I don't want you to do is do it for yourself. I want you to play big, play for something greater than yourself. And you have a platform to really inspire young people, people your age, and do amazing things. And she literally said those exact words. And then I find myself winning tour events and winning majors and now a top player in the world and and she's right I had to battle the mental side and I went through so much adversity and I've and I really believe that that stuff I can help people and inspire people not just with my golf but really with the stuff that really matters which is you know being a great person being a great dad you know handling adversity and being positive and your faith and, and all those things so you're doing that cool. man yeah you're doing cool. it you're Thank playing you. big I appreciate your time so much I was, you know, messing with you in the beginning because I know these days are precious. So to give me a few hours to come on, swing by, just means the world. And it's yeah. been fun getting to know you more. Yeah, well, thank, thank you. Thank you so much, William, yeah. for your time. It's been fun, man. Appreciate you. Let's do a quick facial uh, before we go because I know your girlfriend's here. Okay. You, cool, you cool with that? Yeah, let's go do yeah. it. You seem caught off guard. No one's ever asked you to do that after no. an interview? No, I've never had that happen. Welcome to swing by. <laughs> All 
All right, Wyndham, just want to say thank you for uh, being here. Thought it would be nice to end everything with a nice facial. I think you should end all your segments like this. Yeah, you feel relaxed? Yeah. Probably one of your more favorite interviews. Top, top, it's like, yeah, top five for sure. Yeah, top five, okay. Well, <laughs> what was one? <laughs> no, this has got to be number one for sure. Thanks, man. Great spending Not time with you. Not everyone treats me to a spa day. We got you. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time on Swing By. Thanks, Wyndham. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is nice. Yeah, we could do it again soon, whatever you need. Let's do next week. Appreciate it. See you there. That does it for this edition of Swing By. Appreciate you watching. For more, watch right here. Or you can subscribe right here.